This is the Everything is a Primary Source podcast, the program where history is derived from pop culture. I'm your host, Eric Paul. I was excited to meet and talk with C.C. Payne of the History Collab and its podcast, Untextbooked, this past fall at the National Council for the Social Studies Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Being in the Music City and right next to the Country Music Hall of Fame may have inspired C.C. to choose a record that features a procession of artists, including a few country stars, to talk about. 1985's We Are the World is our clue into the past for this episode. Take a listen. Remind me of the organization that you're involved with, the History... So I, yes, I work at the History Collab, and my main my main thing that I do there is I coordinate a, prod, a podcast that's called Untextbooked, and it's sort of similar in its goal and its vision to this podcast, um, and what we do is we help students ages 15 to 21 get in contact with historians who have some of the answers to the big questions that they have. Um, and then we give them the platform to talk to that historian, uh, have a conversation with them, and then turn that conversation into an episode to teach more people about what they learn. so great. Just, just, yeah. just broadcasting, learning, and, and the method and every I, I love the idea it's such a wonderful thing yeah, the historians you. that you work with are they receptive I assume that they must love it as well oh yes they have a great time a lot of them end up like wrapping up the call saying like this was one of the best interviews I've ever done I think there's something really special that happens when you have that intergenerational sort of moment yeah. of collaborating and trying to arrive at an answer as a team you know it's I absolutely really special. I mean it's 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 such a valuable thing and unfortunately I feel like too many young people nowadays and I, I, I'm sure it's been happening forever, but the, the older generations just puts them down all yeah. the time. Like they, oh, they're just on their phones all the time. Mm-hmm. They don't, and I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, everybody, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's not just kids. By yeah. But there's some great thinking going on. Mm-hmm. Young people have great critical, and I think that that's a product of, the. I mean, where we are right now. These mm-hmm. kinds of teachers yeah. are doing their jobs very well. They're yes. encouraging kids to think critically and genuinely and authentically. Yes. It's just a wonderful thing. I, I love, we're definitely going to be talking more yes. beyond today. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to talk more. <laughs> so from my table, which looks like I'm having a yard sale, um, you chose the We Are the World uh, 45, which considering the list of artists on here, it's kind of amazing. It's a tiny record yes. for like how huge this was. Yeah. And the question that we're pairing it up with is how was it made? And you said just recently you were talking about that with somebody. Yes, I was actually. So I personally am a huge fan of music sort of from this era. So the We Are The World music video is just like always such a fun watch for me because it's got so many artists that I just admire so much. You've got Cindy Lauper on there, you've got Bruce Springsteen. Um, it's really special. But the thing that I've been contending with as I've gotten older is that's a lot of star power to sort of get into one place at one time to make this happen. So how did that even sort of come to be? And funny enough, it might have been, it was some social media thing that sort of had linked me out towards something with an answer. And somebody was explaining that the recording for this video happened after the American Music Awards. Because what's a better time to get a whole ton of musicians sort of in one place than the American Music Awards? But it was happening after the American Music Awards. So everybody's sort of in this celebratory mood. They're not really in the mood to be cooped up in a studio for like hours and hours on end to sort of get this done. So it's funny because I feel like the further we've gotten from the recording and the release, we've seen, and I don't know if anybody listening has seen them, you've seen a couple of clips from the behind the scenes of this moment happening. And there's there's this one that I always laugh at because you can tell that Michael Jackson is getting very irritated at this point, right? People are not hitting their notes, they're not coming in on time, and he's got like this death glare, like we're trying to get out of here, yeah. people, what are you doing? But that's that's the little bit that I know about it. Which is not something you usually see out of Michael Jackson. No. You know, you, you, he always comes across as like super kind super and kind. heal the world. And yeah. He was one of the organizers of this, right? Mm-hmm. I, mean, so, I mean, the USA for Africa, the whole, um, you know, using music as a way to bring attention to mm-hmm. you know the world's problems and how to fix them and stuff mm-hmm. that's his mo i mean that's yeah. mj's mo and i've seen it now that 
streaming, you know, videos and stuff are out there. I saw something recently also of him getting annoyed and actually firing one of his um, his choreographers or something mm -hmm. on stage yeah. in the middle of a song. Mm -hmm. Like he incorporated, and like, oh, so now we get to see another side of him. Yeah. Not that we want to see too many sides of him, but right. um, of all that kind of stuff. And so this is just another one. I, you know, referring to that video of this being recorded, mm -hmm. I remember even at the time when it was on, being like, "This doesn't look real to me." Like they yeah. almost. And now that you mentioned when it took place, mm -hmm. like that's why Michael Jackson had his like sparkly general's jacket exactly. on, and you know the, the cool sunglasses, mm -hmm. and they're all almost like because it almost looks like they were plucked off the covers of their out. The, the whole thing when they're like standing on the high rise, right? It looks like a record store, doesn't it? it? Does. Like looks like the records are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. all just kind of mixed together yeah and but it was like a, a painful experience i guess because that's a lot of personalities oh my goodness rock stars are kind of known for being exactly um, it's so funny and i it's funny because now that we've got the footage and that deeper understanding of the original version um, as somebody who's a part of Gen Z, right, we, I was like in middle school when the remake of We Are the World sort of happened. I believe it was after the earthquake in Haiti happened. It became sort of a fundraiser effort um, for the people of Haiti at that time. And now I'm sort of having the same questions. Like, how do they get everybody there? How did they manage all the like different attitudes and, you know, the like inevitable egos that sort of come with stardom to get that all in one place at one time? How does, how do you make that happen twice? You know, they say lightning doesn't strike twice, right. but it kind of did. So and, and I'm curious the, about it. The 80s, because that's, that's an era of a lot of attitudes in music oh, yeah. stardom. It's like the height of... Was Madonna in that group? Was she I part of it? I think that she was. Because, I mean, she was the material girl. And, and you know, exactly. it's like, <laughs> you can picture all of them. Like, I won't go back there unless I have Evie on water and, you know. Right. Uh, everybody looks at me only with, you know, for 10 seconds. Yeah. You know, without, like, they're just so, like, specific about everything. Mm -hmm. It's wild to, to imagine that. But I also recall kind of confusing this with other stuff because as a little kid in that time period mm -hmm. I feel like there was a lot of these because like this is the time of the year that we start hearing that song it came from I think it was they recorded out of England about uh do they, you know, do they know it's Christmas? Christmas that was another like yeah. super group type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Boy George, yeah. I think Phil Collins, and probably one of the Living Beatles at the time. Yeah. They had, so that was out, and then they had Live Aid, mm -hmm. and then they had Hands Across America, which I don't think had any pop stars in it. But it was still like, I feel like there was like one of those things after another in mm -hmm. the '80s. Yeah. And you know, a more somber note. This is also the age when the uh, AIDS quilt mm -hmm. was being assembled mm -hmm. and that was a very similar thing of how it's made it's assembled by all these different people with yeah. shared experiences Absolutely. why do you think that these things were made in that time period? What does that say to you about the 80s and maybe social awareness or global awareness? That's a great question that's a really great question I think and obviously, you know, like, I wish this was something that I had, like, 10 more days to go research and come <laughs> back with a question. But off the top of my head, what I'm leaning towards is I feel like the 60s and 70s that preceded this, like, time period, right? There's a lot of division happening. And it seems like the 80s sort of marked this moment where people are starting to come to terms with this, like, slightly changed maybe more unified but still has some like things to work out iteration of like america iteration of the world right like the civil rights movement has sort of come and like started to settle down again um and things like that you know in the background the aids crisis and epidemic is sort of starting to build and i think that art has always sort of been this thing that unites people um I think that one of the most fun spaces that you could ever be at is a concert, right? It's a ton of people who are uniting over this like love of a particular art. Yeah. And I think that the music that we're seeing at this moment is sort of in that same sort of vein. Like, art and music just has this incredible capacity for bringing people together. And I think that was really the objective with the USA for Africa, right? Like, what is the best way to bring 
America together mm -hmm. to not necessarily focus on America for a moment, but focus on what we can be doing for another group of people. And music, I feel like, was the best sort of avenue to sort of make that happen, right? We see this, like, even now, I feel like fan culture in the modern era has like sort of taken on a life of its own, right? It's like, for example, if you're a fan of women's rap, like you can't love Nicki Minaj and Cardi B sort of at the same time. They're sort of like die like on op they're sort yeah. of being opposed to each other all the time. But if you do find the space to get them on the same musical track on the same stage and you get those fans to come together and share that moment of camaraderie, like there's something beautiful that kind of happens yeah. from it. So that's what I sort of think. I think that it's just Music has always had this ability to really bring people together. Um, I was a band and a choir kid growing up, so maybe I'm like biased. I just no, think that no, like, music I, is I, the coolest thing in the world. Definitely not to. In fact, the person I was talking to before this, we talked about uh, the song "Over There" uh, from 1917, mm -hmm. and how that, you know, just the lyrics of it speak to referring to all Americans as Yanks, mm -hmm. not just Northerners, and that in that time period that was a unifying message too yeah. the title of the song is we are the world we are the world not yeah. we're a bunch of celebrities in america <laughs> and exactly that's more accurate but they're like saying we are the world we are the children we're yeah. the ones who make it better so yeah I, I still remember it i haven't listened to it in years i can mm -hmm. still hear it yeah uh because it was on the radio all the time like yeah. and they showed the video i assume i wasn't allowed to watch mtv at that age but yeah. you know, i'm pretty sure they had it on all yeah. the time and it's like that you're, you're absolutely right, because attached to each one of those people is a fan base. Mm -hmm. And that fan base, out of that, maybe a percentage of them takes what they're having to say seriously. Yeah. And I think one maybe downside of it is they just kind of, you know, USA for Africa. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty, that's a gigantic continent. You yeah. know, is it like, is there a specific component to Africa or a region in Africa or a specific, you know, it just yeah. seemed like... You know, from any kind of detractors, they might be like, well, just throwing money at right. an, entire, at an continent, entire continent, you know, like there's mm -hmm. some warlords there that probably love that, yeah. you know, and steal from the people that you're, whatever your aid yeah. is trying to. I think that that's, that's something that we see sort of throughout, throughout the history of time with the way that we sort of talk about the continent of Africa. I feel like this is something that is not just exclusive to the we are the world issue, right? I feel like a lot of times when we talk about the continent of Africa, sometimes we're not quick enough to do the work to differentiate like what those different like regions, different nations, the different needs that come up when you look um, throughout the space. Africa is a massive continent. Yeah. Like I feel like some maps don't necessarily do it justice in terms of like just how much space it takes up on our globe, but it's a massive, massive place with so much diversity within it. So I 100% agree. I think that's one of the the shortcomings of this is I wish that there was a little bit more emphasis on like, I don't know, the fact that there's so much to Africa. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, in it's a way, it's point. almost like going back and finding the origin place a hundred years before this, mm -hmm. when Africa was being carved up into colonies. Right. And those colonial borders did not reflect the actual like movement of people in yeah. different kingdoms and empires that had already existed before it. 100%. It was just Europeans showing up, like, doo -doo -doo -doo, this is mm -hmm. ours now. And the, and I mean, that disruption and the erasure, erasure of the culture and the history, mm -hmm. you know, some of it purposeful. They're just chucking, you know, like, here's that. Let's get rid of that. You know, it, yeah. that, 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 you know, whatever that was, <laughs> you know, we're going to start it now. Mm -hmm. That comes back to haunt it because you know, there's a lot of African American artists in this group. Oh yeah. Chances are they probably didn't know mm -hmm. where in the continent their family line went. Right, because we didn't have things like Ancestry.com right. or Twenty Three and Me to and really even do if that they digging. Did, yeah. You know, if if they had, you know, slave, uh, you know, part of their ancestry, mm -hmm. they, they weren't recording. Yeah, that kind those of records. And yeah. and so, ancestry is particularly difficult. Um, you know, so you're dealing with a lot of components here that the end result, it's a nice logo, USA for Africa, mm -hmm. but it does still smack of that kind of almost like white man's burden feeling mm -hmm. of the century before. Of mm -hmm. Like, well, you need us. Like, you know, yeah. we're, we're here to help you out. Right. You, know, you can't do it on your own. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, that, and that, and I think not so much this song, but that English one I was talking about, the mm -hmm. do they know? I mean, yeah. that's a kind of condescending song. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I'm like, what? Do like, they know? Like, like it's Christmas time mind. at all? It's so miserable there. I'm like, I well, know. Not for everybody. Like, right. <laughs> and like, also, I don't know, like, Christmas is not celebrated by everyone. And not there's, the all, same there's a whole way. lot yeah, of I sort mean, of assumptions that go like into the, statements. The like Islamic that. communities in Africa probably not really all that caring yeah. about you know Christmas time. That's know. interesting. Just, so we just tore this thing apart. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Um, now I want to. You know, it's still good. It. I, it's and that's what recorded. I mean, this is a recorded thing, so that's what it does for us. Like they have no choice. But once you put it on a record physically, um, it just stands for us to analyze mm-hmm. and what we get out of it. I mean, and especially this freeform style, I'm sure if somebody, and we could even check ourselves on some of the stuff, like, okay, I wasn't totally, but the, the point of this is being like, yeah, I'm treating this the same way if somebody shoved a snapshot from any time period in front of me or yeah. a, a painting or something like that yeah. and took it apart. Um, no, I hear that. This I, is awesome. I, I love the, you know, the, the graphics of the We Are the World. It looks like, well, it kind of looks like one of those ransom notes. That <laughs> I was just going to point that out. I was going to say we didn't even talk too much about the lettering. And I think that the lettering design is really interesting because it screams collage to me. Yeah. And We Are the World, if if nothing, is a collage mm-hmm. of just all these different voices. So I thought it was really interesting that they sort of chose that art style. I'm really intrigued by the color scheming in particular. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I don't know too much about it, but I know that it does sort of remind me of like... Um, the Pan African flag, I believe, yep. like associated with like Marcus yeah, Garvey the black and, and like the that sort the... of movement, right? This connection that happens between the U.S. and that and seems Africa, to be reserved so. just for the. Uh, in for audio the is the perfect time to do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll put a picture up when I. Yeah. But, but the the just the the word world is the only one that's actually connected. Right. I mean the W is not, but the O R. You know, it's it's so it's in cursive, so it's all. But these other ones are like the we part. Totally different lettering, totally mm-hmm. different font. You know, it, it's intentionally meant to look like you cut it from a magazine or right. something. And then the R and the R and the the are two different, yeah. you know, things all together. And then the world part, which has the Pan African colors mm-hmm. involved in it, uh, and being that I think, you know, historians, anthropologists, archaeologists have all pretty much agreed that Africa is the original place where humans. Mm-hmm emanated from right maybe that's what they're going for yeah so i like that idea i'm gonna erase all that stuff we said about them being you know <laughs> extensions of maybe there is a little bit more knowledge here right. like, no we are mm-hmm. all of us here even kenny right. rogers even uh, kenny rogers <laughs> is <you laughs> even know, cindy Lauper. if he did his ancestry it would eventually find itself back to the uh, yeah. cultural hearth of you know the crescent valley <laughs> right it's so interesting isn't it uh, Cece, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Yes, and thank you. like I've been saying to everybody, but especially you today, I hope this isn't the last time we do this. Yes, I hope so too. It would be so nice to collaborate again in the future. This was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Three cheers for podcasting. Yes, three cheers. <laughs> three, we are the worlds for podcasting. <laughs> I'd like to make a point to say that CC's podcast project, Untextbooked, was just nominated for an Ambie Award, that's the Oscars for podcasting, in the Best History Podcast category. So if you aren't listening to Untextbooked yet, now here's even more reason to give it a try, when you're not listening to the Everything is a Primary Source podcast, of course. We wish the best of luck to CC and all the team at Untextbooked when we hear the announcement late March. Please rate and follow this podcast wherever you are listening to it right now and share it with everyone you know. You can follow the Everything is a Primary Source podcast on social media, including YouTube and especially Instagram. Show notes, which expound on each episode and essays about history and pop culture, can be found on Substack. The hub for all these things is everything-history.com. Thank you for listening to the EPS podcast, where everything is a primary source.